that would broadcast it on TV channels, you know, regarding COVID 19 and safety. At that point, Alhamdulillah, we did a publication on Muslim human rights in light of COVID 19. We organized workshops, happened to the Hussar. People were stood at that point to see what's happened to the government. At one point, if you remember, we were discussing, and this discussion took place here, it took at the Muslim. We were talking about cremating our Muslim fellow brothers and sisters. Cremating means burning them. What the Hindus will do today, individuals. What would the community do today, individuals? And for a moment, thinking that a brother has passed away, that we need to cremate, cremate them. Or individuals that we claim to perform ghusl upon. And how many jinnahs I attended many, and so many probably attended many of the jinnahs are prayers. Well, as we know, the blue pastor, the father pastor, the mother, the grandfather, but only 15 people were allowed to participate in the Jalal prayer. Now imagine your blue one has passed away, you are not allowed to stand at the cupboard to bury him. This is what was taking place last year, and everybody felt this. But well, this one, Alhamdulillah, as many of the mosques around the country, we adapted quickly, we seek guidance, and from our teacher, Shaykh Fikar, and some of that, our medics, all the teachers that were present, all the micro, and we quickly continue to provide, you know, provide for education to, uh, to the community here as well as council for mosque to protect our congregation, to protect you, protect our Muslim brothers and sisters here. And we also introduced the P4 technology. As you remember last year, there's a protocol where you have to agree a temperature, you have to get sanitized, you have to make sure your hands are clean. You have to wear a mask, you have to carry a shoe bag, okay, you have to come into the masjid and you have to make sure you stand a meter or two meter distance. This is the, the one we were going through last year. When I'm looking back at all that and the situation we now, we can say, Alhamdulillah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He allows us to pass that cash. And we don't want to go back where we have to close the masjid and the congregation place suspended. So we don't want to go back and say there's no Juma prayer taking place or there's no five minute prayers. We don't want to go back and we were talking that the Eid prayers will be read in your back garden or do the Eid prayer with your family. We don't want to go back and we ask Allah the other, do not send us back to that situation. But Alhamdulillah, through that period, al Madhus Islami, he took a, a vital role, one of the leading role. And Council of Mosque recognized this as well as British Beacon Mosque Awards 2020, that was last year. Al Makhlis Islami, Alhamdulillah, was awarded the most innovative Masjid Award. And along yesterday, as you know, Council for Mosque, which is an organization based in Bradford, been for 40 years, so our elders established this. So we have decided to go to gather together collectively to make decisions for the betterment of our society, uh, the Muslim and non Muslim community. And yesterday, also, Alhamdulillah, we were presented by uh, this gift by the Council of Mosque. It was 40 years. And I do have the president of Council for Mosques here, Zulfikar Karim, the president currently for Council of Mosques, as well as we have Shokat Wright, who is the uh, CEO of British uh, Mosque Board, who is also president. And we, as a matter give this certificate, certificate of recognition for accepting COVID 19 response presented to Al al Islami. So, it's not just Al Makhdul Islami that got this award, this is an award for you. This is your award for you. It was you in the way that you people, Alhamdulillah, your kids come here that you help us and you follow the instructions that were given out to you. So Alhamdulillah, so that's important. And today to recognize this achievement, we have uh, Zulfikar Karim is also here, as well as uh, Shokat Wright, like I mentioned, he's the CEO for uh, British Muslim Award. This, uh, that the set of, you know, the work with Muslim uh, up, up and down the country, okay, helping them, aiding them to set up Masai uh, policies and it's definitely today and inshallah in a few moments uh, the British beacon must work with each other we pass over the Kila Hufisa and actually it's passed over to you. So that's why we're here so and I mentioned the Hadith Sharif and that's the message also that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us I mentioned the Hadith Sahih because I thank people who thank Allah Azza wa Jal. But somebody if you help somebody you aid somebody, support somebody, then we see in this country and wherever we go around the world, we say thank you. We say thank you. We even say here. Or as the Muslim says, that Allah, 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 reward you abundantly. So inshallah, if you want to come here, 
كان بيغوت المذنب تكيلا مفتسب أن يكون واقع الله سبحانه وتعالى he keeps it protected and those dreams that we have lost just Allah has made Allah to raise it there Allah can not to paradise and those who are suffering currently Allah Ta'ala cures them Allah Ta'ala heals them and I also mention Alhamdulillah we have the team here of our medics we got solicitors here engineers, doctors a whole team of ulama it was a whole team that collected came together business people and Alhamdulillah we made certain decisions that we didn't want to go for the betterment to save lives we had to go that now long time and even currently even though we know COVID-19 you know, the rules have relaxed I know we're in Pakistan off the uh, red list so many of you have taken this to Pakistan you know that we have to do we have to come together again collectively okay but we still have to save lives we still have to follow certain protocols certain rules okay the vaccination and the rest and try to keep our blood will protect us. So yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do success, more success than Makhul Islami. And we see the success, alhamdulillah, it's been a decade that Makhul came to this area in 2010 or 2011, alhamdulillah, the course is started. And we produced over 300 graduates. 300 male and female graduates we have produced from this institute. And you want to find an institute within 10 years where you've seen so many Alma and Alimats, young ones, British born, and many of them come from professional backgrounds, alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. And in October, uh, 23rd of October, you were invited to this. The, the previous one was for sisters only. It wasn't an invitation to the public. But inshallah, on the 23rd of October, inshallah, we have now 35 brothers and graduate from Islamic law traditions to the mm -hmm. And in them, alhamdulillah, we have got doctors, we have got professors from universities, we have you. Uh, and all, mashallah. And then we graduated 35 of them from this institute. And we need to call the English speaking. So that it's like we found last year, we have English speaking to call the now, when they did the videos, okay, about COVID 19, send out the, the, the info that we need at that time. Be Urdu, be English, and other language, alhamdulillah, this Buddha's work. So, alhamdulillah, we have 35 Buddhas that we graduated, inshallah, on the 23rd of time. All of you are invited at this event. You're invited. So now these are some of our success stories. Other than that, as you know, at Matul Islami, we have a, a, a homeopathic clinic downstairs where there's many people with mental health, people who are suffering illnesses and they want an uh, alternative to the uh, medicine from what we see here. They can put to the uh, clinic there. We are humble have a community hall downstairs. We have a library. Alhamdulillah. And we are not since, since uh, last year when the COVID kicked in, we have distributed over 30,000 hot, hot meals. 30,000 are probably more by now. That's what we are doing, Alhamdulillah. This is by the help of brothers and sisters like yourself. And even to this day, every single day, we are delivering. I just spoke to one of the brothers who delivers. And we have just been to Keithley, delivered 20 boxes. He prepared another 13 and went to deliver to an agency. 20 boxes we are delivering per day. We can say, subhanAllah, to this book, if you go back last year, <coughs> now we were delivering five per week. Five per week we were doing, I'm going to think this is, you know, it's good. We always see that more poverty, more people are struggling. We are going to deliver 20 boxes per day to individuals who are struggling. And 30,000 hot meals we have delivered. And I actually myself, last year, with one of the brothers who delivers, I went with him. I just want to, want to go with him to deliver some food packs to see what the situation is. And whenever we went, he said to me, brother, this is a sister, she's divorced. She's took it mentally. Another, this sister, she comes from a broken background again, domestic violence. So many sisters are struggling out there. So many brothers men mental health, health issues in there. I will deliver food packs to them. But the sense of peace I was receiving, that we knew, alhamdulillah, that tonight, that today somebody is not going to sleep on an empty stomach. Because my Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned these are the things that we're learning here through the Jummah prayer. My Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that what was a Muslim, he is not a Muslim or a true believer, that his neighbor is hungry, he's hungry and he sleeps, he sleeps on the full stomach. How can it be your, that your neighbor or neighbor is going to be right next door to you? He means 40 houses to the right and 40 houses to the, houses to the left. It could even be the neighbor in country that is hungry and we're watching away to the full. Our deen teaches us to care for them. 
and this country that we live in, that we say, you know, it's the most richest country we live here, people come here to work and trade. In this country, we have to deliver 40 <coughs> boxes per day. Now imagine in terms of what's up to there, what the situation is there. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this more barakah shall not be scary for me now, Tina Sheikh Mufi Khalid Sallallahu and this award that's been presented is been presented to you people. Okay, to Allah that what you are going to be. So inshallah, if you want to give up, Muksa will come. And inshallah, maybe, if you want maybe three, four minutes, or maybe five minutes, okay, for the Jibbal prayer will take them. But this was important to mention, and the Hadisha was quoted to you. So that's part of the Qutbah, the Jibbal, to send a message out. And actually, our deal is practical. Our deal is that we just go, and many times Musa mentions, it's about the practicality, you know, the practicing the deal. You don't just come in here to the Jibbal prayer, listen and go away. And when I mention about poverty, those people are struggling with mental health, you know, just one of the brothers graduated from this institute, he stood in four and a half years. Just three weeks ago, his brother was 22 years old committed suicide. 22 years old, a new brother. We have issues like this that we face in our community. Now we can sit here and think for a moment, ponder, and do nothing about it. We just wait for another, another death, death of a brother or a sister who commits suicide. And I'm about Muslims committing suicide is haram. Because they have nothing, they have nobody to speak to, nobody to talk to. He was smiling, my Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam smiling in charity for the individual who so maybe should just smile at him in Sadaqah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the Muqam 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 and even though they were struggling and came the head, but Alhamdulillah, they were at the forefront, guiding uh, the Muslim community at that difficult time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward uh, each one of you, Alhamdulillah, inshallah. So the question. <coughs> our request. We have our guest. We have uh, Zulfiqar Kareem. Is uh, known as a uh, Zufi Kitaj of Council of Mosque. I'd like to welcome him back here. Alhamdulillah, yesterday I mentioned we received the acceptance, the certificate of recognition, acceptable COVID 19 response award by uh, Zufi Kareem and his team. So Allah Ta'ala, Alhamdulillah, that they recognize that the work that Al Matusan did. I have shown that right to me, Alhamdulillah, he's the CEO for British Beacon Mosque Award. It would be Alhamdulillah as a long introduction. Alhamdulillah, he did this. And inshallah, request to say a few words and then present the uh, award that you have with Isa, to you people. Okay, we we'll request uh, uh, Zufqar to come for, forward first. The President of Council wants to say a few words, inshallah, and then I will get you up to the right and then you will be shown. Uh, this is a masjid, and it's the place where actually I don't make speeches. But thank you for the offer, and I will now hand over to Shah. Uh, This award uh, that I'm about to present is uh, an amazing award based upon not just the specific issue of our innovation, it's actually an award for this institution, the Marcus itself. The work that you have been doing, the vision that has been implanted, 
that the execution of this vision, the delivery of this vision, is extraordinary. When the masjid was, so the British speaker of Moscow was, is here to uh, recognize excellence, Ahsan. What happened was last year that when we opened the nominations, many people from around the UK nominated your mosque. And actually, Sheikh Hassan just told me he doesn't like to be called this a mosque. I think this is an institution. So when this was nominated, uh, it was shortlisted by the judges. The judges reviewed this uh, institution and put it to public vote. Over 45,000 people voted last year. 45,000 people went on. <coughs> and this institution in the most innovative development service was voted the best service in the world. And I'm sure that many people that voted for this institution voted on what they saw online and then maybe drilled down on the vision that Sheikh Hassan was presenting. And it's with great pleasure and with great humility that today we had the opportunity, uh, Brother Zulfiq Hakarim, the President of the Bakr Council for Mosque, last night posted the 40th anniversary of the Council for Mosque. And I must commend him and his leadership that this was the first Council for Mosques in Western world, in Bradford. Bradford established the first Council for Mosques in the Western Hemisphere. And from this establishment, many other places have developed a Council for Mosques. We were invited last night, it was a great honor and privilege to be there. And we saw again that in the Council for Mosques ceremony, that the Matthias was awarded again. This validated, I think, the decision last year to award the Matthias the most innovative <coughs> mosque service in Britain. May Allah bless you all. May Allah bless your leadership. May Allah bless this great man. And if the award is here, Brothers of the Church, can I ask you to give us the President of the Council for Mosque the award? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I know time is over. May Mawlana Ishtia, Mawlana Rizwan, Qazi Muslim, Ibrahim, and Tariq Bhai. In five words, I will say that it is team work. It is not the one person work. That this will be received as a team. Tariq Bhai is coming to work. The first time I will be late for me. All they will receive this reward on behalf of you and behalf of mine. Inshallah. Just to, just to conclude my point, I just want to say that this is a sign of great leadership. The credit is not being taken by one individual. This is a team effort. And I know that from when we visited and audit this facility, we realize that there is a fantastic team here and I just heard today that you last year graduated 200 alimas which is an incredible uh, phenomenal development and we believe that the seed and the vision that has been established in the 200 women will spread around this country. This was, uh, Sheikh Hassan was also nominated for one of the most impactful Imams in the UK. One of the most impactful, so that his impact now is not just in Bradford. His impact is national and international. And this is an award given to him. Independent judges have given this award to him. So Sheikh Hassan?
Yes, I mean, you say that the Almocus medics, with their work, did help to save many, many lives in Israel. And, and I think that, that, that credit, obviously, is due to their efforts, but obviously it's all in the hands of the United States. Sorry, I know you very bad. I've got permission to set this up. I'm from London. This is my first time in Bradford. I've been with this up for literally five minutes. And that five minutes, the impact it's had on me, I cannot even express it. You are so blessed to have a person of his vision, of his caliber, of his status amongst you. And I'm saying that with a the, the greatest of heart from here, right in front of him, because he is an inspiration leader. And with the few thoughts he just shared with me, I just blown me away. And I'm just now becoming such a person that I want to learn more from Mufisa. And I want to come more to work Bradford so that I can learn more from Sheikh Hassan Zabachan.